All right, so the hard work is done. Now we can get on and just plot our deflection. So it's kind of a fairly easy task to, to get us over the line and to wrap this thing up. So we're using Plotly again. So again, number of different libraries you could use to do plotting and visualization. Two big ones would be uh, Matplotlib and Plotly. We used Plotly up here to generate these two plots, shear force and, uh, and bending moment. I particularly like this plotting library, and so I'm going to use the exact same uh, approach to plot our deflection. So let's scroll on down here. Now, I'm not going to labor the details of this too much because essentially we're just copying what we've already discussed and explained when we plotted our shear force diagram and our bending moment diagram. So, um, yeah, we won't spend too much time laboring the details. But basically, with Plotly, how it works is you define a layout object. Uh, and this is essentially a, a, an object, a data structure that contains a lot of the um, the settings for your plot. So it'll have things like your, um, your let me see, what else does it have? It has uh, options to do with your title, um, the fonts, um, your title of your axes, these types of things. Again, we've, we've, we've looked at this previously. You'll then define another object, which is going to be your line, your deflected shape, uh, set a whole lot of parameters there. Um, and then we will essentially just call the figure and we'll pass in, when we call uh, the figure, we'll pass in the objects that we want plotted uh, and we'll pass in the layout object as well that defines how the, the, the plot looks. So that's going to be uh, our approach here. So let's just get into it here. So the first thing I need to do is define my layout object. So I'm just going to call it layout. It's going to be equal to geo.layout and geo is coming from uh, Plotly. Uh, so this was uh, defined previously. In fact, if I just, let me see, if I go up to, ah, okay, so here it is. So what did we do? We brought in import Plotly as PY. Then we imported Plotly.graph objects as GO. So this is the GO I keep referring to. I'm going to be referring to that quite a lot. And then this is just an extra, just to refresh the memory, this is an extra line of code that we need to implement if we want our plots to open uh, or be produced within our Jupyter Notebook here. So that's where this, I just wanted to highlight where this geo was coming from. So let's go back down to where we were. Okay, so we're saying layout is equal to geo.layout. Now, let me see, best way to do this, let me just, because uh, this, is, this is very prone to making errors, I'm gonna just copy and paste in here and then just explain what's going on. So I've just defined geo.layout and then I've opened my bracket and then there's a closing bracket down here. Within here, I'm defining a number of objects, right? So I've got title, and then within title, I've got text uh, is going to be deflection. Um, these are the X and Y, uh, if you like, offsets for the positioning of the deflection label or title. And this is the anchor, um, the anchor of the, the anchor location within that text label. Then we've got title font. Again, this is all optional. I'm just setting my font size. I'm setting my y-axis label or title and my x-axis title. Now I'm also setting a range of values. Uh, I want my x-axis to go from negative one meter to the one meter past the span of my beam. And I want to turn my legend off. Now you are not nor am I ever going to remember all of this because, you know, frankly, I don't do enough plotting for this uh, to become muscle memory. So when you need to find out how to do things, and if you want to produce a plot that looks different to what I've produced here, or you want to, um, oh, I don't know, you want to, whatever else you want to do with your plot to make it look in some way different to mine, all you have to do is Google and find out, uh, because there's loads of code out there, and in fact, the stuff produced by Plotly themselves, uh, their own docs, uh, are excellent. And so you just Google to find out what you want to do, right? Because, you know, to be honest about it, that's exactly how I worked out how to do this. So now that we've got a layout object defined, I'm going to go ahead and define uh, the shear, oh, no, not the shear, I'm going to go ahead and define the deflection trace, okay, the actual deflected shape. So let's... Uh, Let's put a note in here. And again, I'll just go ahead and copy in some code from my cheat sheet here. So what have we got? I'm defining a, a variable called line. I'm letting that equal to another graph object from Plotly. This time I'm reaching in and I'm using their scatter object, right? So I'm saying I want my X values to equal to X, large X. This was the range, uh, the array of X values from within our code. I want the Y values to be the calculated deflection values. I want that to be plotted as a line. 
Um, I want the deflection, the name of that line is going to be deflection. It's going to be orange. Now, I want essentially my deflected shape to be filled in. I want the distance between the horizontal axis, which represents my undeflected beam, the distance between that and the actual deflected shape to be filled in with a fill color of this guy here. This is an RGB alpha value. So it's essentially like an orangey color. And this last number here indicates the degree to which you can see through it. Um, so that's just, it's just a stylistic thing. You know, I've done, I did a red here, I did a green here, and I'm gonna do an orangey color for my deflection. Uh, so that's my line defined. Now I also want to define a horizontal line that represents the structure. Again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. Uh, so what have I got? I'm just defining another scatter object. This time I'm, I'm, I'm defining it as a variable called axis and I'm just setting manually my x and y values. So the x values are going to be zero and span. Again, this just represents the beam, right? And the y values are going to be zero and zero. The mode this time again is going to be lines and the line color is going to be black. All right, and now I can go ahead and actually call this thing, right? Or call the figure itself. So let me write a note that says generate and view the figure. All right, what are we going to do here? We're going to say figure uh, is equal to geo dot figure. Again, everything's coming from this geo. This is uh, the toolbox that Plotly gives us basically. And from that toolbox, we're calling figure. We have to pass that um, data and the data we're going to pass is going to be a list like this. And I'm going to pass in all of the things I want plotted on this figure. And for me, that's just line and axis. And then the other thing I need to pass in is the layout. So the layout is just going to equal the layout. So this is the actual label uh, of what we of of the uh, argument, the argument label, and we're letting it equal to whatever layout was defined as here. So that layout is that layout. Um, we could have called that anything, uh, but this word needs to stay as layout. All right. So now that we've done that, the very last line of code is just py dot offline so we want because we want this to plot within our within our notebook here dot i plot dot i plot and fig okay excellent now if i've not made any mistakes i should execute this and we should get a nice deflected shape so let's see what we get wonderful 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 okay so there you have it that is your numerically obtained or calculated deflection and if we if we at least qualitatively if we diff or if we compare that with what we got in our previous uh, previous post where we did this using Macaulay's method, let me jump back over there. You can see, remember, this was the structure we're analyzing, and this was the deflected shape we got previously, right? So again, we're just ex we're just comparing it qualitatively for now. We'll come back in the next lecture and, and compare it quantitatively. But if you just look at this shape here compare it to this shape here and it's looking good it's looking so far so good so that's it your calculator is finished you've got a a nice code now let me just uh, let me just hide that and uh, yeah, okay, so we don't need to hide anything else. So now you've got a nice notebook that you can run. You can define your beam. Um, you can define its loading at the top uh, and run it. And then you're gonna get a shear force diagram, bending moment diagram. And now after this project, you've got a nice deflected shape. Excellent. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I hope you find it helpful going forward. Uh, but what we want to do just before we completely wrap this thing up is in the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to do that validation exercise where we compare the deflections obtained using the analytical solution, Macaulay's method we'll use. Uh, we're going to compare that with uh, this numerical deflection. Now we're not going to actually go longhand through calculating Macaulay's method again. All we're going to do is take this code here, which we wrote previously, um, and we've seen that guy in that previous post. Again, just for reference, this post is this one here, Macaulay's method for fast beam deflections. So we're gonna take, let me see, where is it? We're gonna take that block of code, that's gonna allow us to generate that deflected shape, and we're, that's the analytical solution, and we're just gonna plot our numerical solution on top. And if all is going well, and we've not made any mistakes, the two lines should line up almost perfectly. Right, we'll pick that up in the next video.